Good afternoon, Healing Journeys family. My name is Kevin Chapman, Dr. Kevin Chapman. I'm a licensed psychologist, and I'm just grateful that Julianne, my friend, has allowed me to be the guest for the month of August on Healing Journeys today. That is a privilege and an honor that I don't take lightly, and I definitely have a word from the Lord, and I'm just so excited to be able to share with you all again. This is part two of what we talked about a week ago, and just so you know, if you didn't join last time, we talked about understanding a spirit of fear, just breaking down what a spirit of fear is. So last time we talked about what a spirit of fear is. Today, we're going to talk about what I call the essence of a spirit of fear. A couple manifestations, two of the main manifestations that I see in my experience, not only with clients, but just fellow believers that I see on a regular basis who declare the word of God, know the word of God, know that they're changed in the spirit, know that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells on the inside of them, and they yet still struggle, right? And we know that, well, Kevin, I have an unrenewed mind. Well, I know I learned this when I grew up. Well, I had this traumatic experience. And that's not discounting those experiences, trust me. But what I'm saying is that they know what the word of God says, and yet there's so many of us who continue to struggle. And the answer, the question is always, well, why is that? Why is that the case? Well, I'm excited because the Lord has really pressed upon my heart, not only with my career, but in the ministry as well, to just help fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord to navigate what I call soul work. Amen. We know the spirit's not the issue. So I'm really excited to just really help us unlock Proverbs again, four five. Last time we talked about get wisdom, get understanding exclamation point. And my role really in the body is to really just help us understand. Let's get that understanding of why do I struggle with anxiety? What is anxiety? What are these symptoms that have been plaguing me for most of my life? And how do I unlock and unleash a man the power of god to supersede all those things that i am not designed to be struggling with amen so last time we talked about understanding a spirit of fear today we're going to talk about what i call the essence of a spirit of fear last time just to quickly recap we talked about being one with the lord first corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 we talked about first thessalonians 5 23 right we're a spirit we're a soul we're a body and our spirit's not the issue. Our soul and the body, mm, questionable, right? <laughs> so those are the things that we have to really learn how to navigate so that we can unlock that power of God that's on the inside of us. Amen. And we also talk about the fruit of the spirit. And we know that, again, it's the fruit of the spirit, right? Those manifestations, those characteristics of Jesus himself. So we talked about understanding that. And what we define the spirit of fear as is chronic fearfulness. So we said a spirit of fear is essentially what we call chronic fearfulness fearfulness. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about what we call the essence of a spirit of fear. So I'm going to give you two major manifestations that we see on a regular basis, even with kingdom people, of a spirit of fear. So that's what we're going to get into today. So if you've got your Bibles, let's tune in, let's go. So let me give you a foundational scripture. We're going to start out with Psalms chapter 139, verse 23. Psalms 139, verse 23. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. That's interesting wording. David himself, who said that, he said anxieties, plural. He didn't say anxiety, he said anxieties. And I think if you think about that, that's not that hard to understand. We struggle, many of us, with different types of distress, right? Many of us who struggle with anxiety, some people tell us all the time, well, brother, I know what the word says but I'm struggling because I'm anxious about my child going off to college, or I'm anxious about paying my bills, right? Oh, by the way, I think I'm gonna get COVID, right? I'm afraid to get shots, right? So the focus of those anxieties tends to be different across people, but here's the thing. Many people who struggle with those anxieties notice it's not just one thing, right? And we're gonna break down anxiety and whatnot. That's my area of specialty clinically. And we're gonna talk about that, but it says, search my heart and know my anxieties, plural. And that's really important. So let's go to Ezekiel chapter 12, starting out in verse 10. We're going to read to verse 20 and see what it says in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 12, 18 through 20. Here's what it says. It says, <clears throat> son of man, eat your bread with quaking and drink your water with trembling and anxiety and say to the people of the land, thus says the Lord God to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the land of Israel. They shall eat their bread, again, with anxiety and drink their water with dread, 
so that her land may be emptied of all who are in it because of the violence of all those who dwell in it, then the cities that are inhabited shall be laid waste and the land shall become desolate and you shall know that I am the Lord. Now, if you break down Ezekiel 18 verses 18 through 20, Ezekiel 12, 18 through 20, it's interesting because it says that there's the anxiety present, but what it talks about is some actions associated with anxiety. You notice that? It says, drink your water with trembling and anxiety. So there's actions associated with anxiety. It's not just feelings of being anxious. There's actions associated with it, which we'll talk about in a second. So that's really important to note. And then it says, eat their bread again with anxiety. Eating bread is action. So again, if you can kind of picture, right, folks drinking their water, eating their bread and being really nervous and anxious about it, right? You hear people sometimes, especially in the country, talking about having a nervous breakdown and whatnot. Like we're talking about anxiety is pervasive in our society and it is not to be so brothers and sisters. And that's the thing that we need to, we're going to navigate throughout this process. So we got plural here, right? It's saying anxieties, multiple types. We also have this idea that there's actions associated with anxiety, right? And one of my favorite scriptures that we're going to come back to next week, Proverbs 12, 25, but just tuck that away now. It says anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. So we're going to unlock some things with that. But again, anxiety in the heart of man. So if we take these scriptures together, like we did last time, we find that we already know that a spirit of fear is chronic fearfulness. We also now know that chronic fear, fearfulness can manifest in different ways. We talk about anxieties, plural, whether it be thunderstorms, interstates, getting shots, um, things like that, getting a disease or a sickness, right? We'll get into that. But the key here is what the Lord is really pressing on my heart to share about the essence of a spirit of fear is that we need to understand that when we think about anxiety in this case, we got to define what anxiety is because we know that anxiety is just not a feeling. We know that it's an emotional experience, but this is very important, very simple, right? But it's very impactful if we can unlock this. And this is the key. Anxiety, if you read those scriptures, is a future-oriented emotion, right? It's a future-oriented emotion that has thoughts of uncontrollability and unpredictability of future events. That's important, y'all, because the thing is, is that when we think about being anxious or getting anxious, which we'll talk about being anxious for nothing in a second, anxiety is never about the present moment. That's for somebody watching. But anxiety is never about the present moment. So part, part, point A is understanding that anxiety is always about the future. So that's a very important element to anxiety. But here's the other element that somebody needs to hear. Anxiety, and the scripture supports this is not just feelings. Anxiety has three parts. And this is important. Again, Proverbs 4, 5, get wisdom and get understanding. We got to understand what these emotional culprits are that really have been ruling and reigning in many of our lives. We have to understand what they're comprised of and that way we can take them captive. Amen. So it's a really important to understand. So anxiety has three parts. Anxiety is comprised of thoughts. What I say to myself, feelings, which are really physical sensations in my body. Again, Ezekiel, quaking, right? So it's that arousal in my body, heart racing, shortness of breath, right? Dizziness, lightheadedness. So it's the arousal in my body. So feelings. And then we have behavior, quaking with trembling. Did y'all notice that? So anxiety has three parts, thoughts, physical feelings in my body, and my behavior. So anytime somebody experiences that emotion known as anxiety, we know that it has those three parts. So that's extremely important. And again, anxiety is never about the present. Anxiety is always about the future. And the word actually speaks to that. So that's something to tuck away. So what am I saying? One essence of a spirit of fear, which we talked about was chronic fearfulness in part one. This is part two. Chronic fearfulness or a spirit of fear is manifested one way through what we call simply chronic anxiety chronic anxiety okay so chronic anxiety so let's delve into chronic anxiety so with that being said let's go to philippians chapter 4 verse 6 many of y'all know the scripture philippians chapter 4 verse 6 all right 
And we know what it says. We're going to read it. New King James, be anxious for nothing, right? But in everything, not some things, but in everything by prayer and supplication. What's it say? It says with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Many times when we struggle with anxiety, right? We make it our request known to God once everything has already taken place, right? But it says with thanksgiving, right? So I'm not going to jump into the thanksgiving part right now, amen? But nonetheless, it says be anxious for nothing. Let me explain something. Being anxious and experiencing anxiety are not the same things. Let me say that again. Being anxious and experiencing anxiety aren't the same. The word of God tells us to be anxious for nothing. Being represents, even in the Greek, existence, right? Being who I am, my identity, what I'm comprised of. So being anxious, again, represents a spirit of fear in the sense that it's chronic anxiety, meaning there's a mindset associated with how I view things. My worldview, though biblical, may be that I'm used to looking at everything around me, who I am, how I interact with others, and my future through the lens of distress, right? Through the lens of a threat bias, as we like to say. Many people who struggle with chronic anxiety tend to remember things that were more threatening that occurred, like the bad stuff that happened, right? Hence the thanksgiving in the word of God, but also tend to pay more attention to the things that are threatening, right? It's like, I've passed this test 25 times, but there's that one though, right? So it's this idea that I'm only paying attention to threat and that becomes my experience. So being anxious for nothing is not the same as experiencing what many of us, if we're honest, have on a pretty regular basis. And that's experiencing the emotion known as anxiety. See, that's not a spirit of fear. A spirit of fear is chronic anxiety. What's the difference, Kevin? Well, here's what I'm saying. Experiencing anxiety is saying, oh, I have an upcoming exam, right? And I need to get an 80% on this test or I'm gonna fail the class. How many of y'all know and would agree that you're gonna have some heart racing, right? We can stand on the word and we should, that needs to be our first go-to. But I'm saying because of the way, because of the fall, we talked about the fall and we talked about neuroticism being unlocked in the fall and that disposition that many of us have of being chronically anxious, right? Happen because we live in a fallen world and many of us have this high intensity of emotional experiences, these negative emotions, and we view our world as threatening and, our, and we perceive ourselves as unable to cope with threat. So if you couple that with modeling from parents, right? Traumatic experiences, the way I've learned to think about myself, negative experiences I've had in the context of certain situations and whatnot, all of those things can shape the way I perceive myself and my interaction with the world around me. So when I'm saying being anxious, chronic anxiety is what we're talking about. We're saying that despite me standing on the word, I seem to have an urge, right? Or a compulsion and feel compelled to be nervous when I'm in certain situations, despite me knowing what the word of God says. Many of us, right, have that tendency and therefore we need to be reprogrammed, right? Romans 12 too. So that's what we're gonna get into. So being anxious is a spirit of fear, right? being known in the natural as chronic anxiety. So what do I mean by that? Some examples of that are what we call disorders of anxiety, right? Generalized anxiety disorder. What's that? Chronic worry, right? We often talk about OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. We also often talk about social anxiety disorder. These are all labels that I would not encourage you all to accept. But again, as I said last time, these are all symptoms of syndromes or disorders, but our identity is in Christ. Amen. I'm not saying we ignore those things, but I'm saying there's a greater reality to the supernatural and the power on the inside of us and the spirit of God that dwells on the inside of us, that we have the ability and the DNA through the word of God to unlock that and get that to be activated. So what we're doing is we're breaking down this understanding. All right. Amen. So I just want to say that to say that if you want to know what I mean by chronic anxiety as a spirit of fear, we're talking about things that meet criteria, right? for chronic anxiety syndromes and disorders like social anxiety, OCD, PTSD, right? Uh, we talked about trichotillomania a little bit last time, which is hair pulling, right? Uh, and things like that. So these are all things based on this disposition and this chronic tendency to be anxious, all right? So that's what I mean when I say be anxious for nothing, is that on the one hand, experiencing anxiety 
and responding to it, like say studying for the exam, my anxiety tanks, it goes away. Why? Because that anxiety was trying to prepare me to address something that could in fact be threatening. See, that's, see, that's the thing is that being anxious is one thing, experiencing anxiety when my emotional experience is saying, hey, Kevin, you might need to pay attention to that upcoming test because you see, if you don't study, there's this thing called a natural consequence. And if you don't prepare for it, you're going to fail. So if I study, I might still experience some anxiety at first. But like I said last time, if I prepare for the exam and study and start remembering the content, what happens to my anxiety on test day? Hey Amen. You see what I'm saying? So I've responded to that anxiety because it was trying to help me prepare, which is a very important point. In the Greek, the closest translation to the word anxiety is actually care. Right. And it's really interesting because there's a di couple different definitions of care. On the one hand, care, right, or careful, if you will, often means to distract or to take into a completely different direction. So it's like I have all these different things swirling in my head. Does that sound familiar? So it's like I have all these things that draw me away from my source, right? The Lord Jesus Christ. But it's all these other things that are essentially competing for my attention. But on the other hand, care also means like when somebody says be careful, right? It's kind of consistent with what it says in 1 Peter 5, 8, when it says be sober, and be vigilant. It doesn't say be hyper vigilant. It says be vigilant. So when we're talking about the other definition of care or anxiety, it's actually meaning to be thoughtful and deliberate. So that's interesting because that corresponds with what the word is saying here. Being anxious is chronic anxiety. On the other hand, responding to the emotion of anxiety correctly by confronting whatever the distress is, is adaptive. That's important. We oftentimes call anxiety preparatory coping when we use it correctly. All right. Amen. So I say that to say that one essence of a spirit of fear is what we call chronic anxiety, also known as like debilitating anxiety in my world, which I don't like my clients owning labels. Again, our identities in the Lord. But for the sake of understanding, again, OCD, social anxiety disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, which is chronic worry. Right. Which we'll talk about worry. PTSD phobias, things and things like that that we treat all the time. All right. So that's one piece. All right. Here's the other thing that I want to talk about. So the, another essence of a spirit of fear. All right. So we have chronic anxiety on the one hand. On the other hand, we have what we call chronic panic attacks. Now, this is interesting because many people might think, well, yeah, I don't know what you mean by panic. And that makes sense that that's a, the essence of a spirit of fear. But here's what here's something a lot about fear and panic that a lot of people don't know. And this is where we want to talk about that a little bit. We talked last time about fear, meaning phobos, right? Coming from the Greek word phobos. We literally get the word phobia from that. And just to remind us that phobos is like that which causes terror or dread. And it also means in the word intimidation, anything that is intimidating by adversaries. Right. How many of us have adversaries? It could be our own thoughts that are adversaries. We know the enemy is an adversary. People who are against us, adversaries. Right. Sam Ballard, like with Nehemiah, adversaries, someone speaking against you. Those are all adversaries. Right. So we're talking about anything that causes fight, flight or terror. And it's really interesting because, again, another essence of a spirit of fear is, again, recurrent panic attacks. Now, here's why I say that. All right. We know that panic and fear, believe it or not, are the exact same things. Now, let me explain to you what I mean by that. We said that anxiety is never about the present moment. The word of God talks about that. It says you're going to eat, drink your water, eat your bread with anxiety about things to come. Right. We talked about Adam and Eve. They were anxious about the potential of the Lord when they heard him. They didn't even see him. Yet. They heard him walking through the cool of the garden. Right. Future. When we talk about fear in the body of Christ, we're talking about present danger. Now, talk that away because we oftentimes confuse anxiety with fear, but anxiety is future danger or threat, right? Fear is based upon present danger. And that's important because just like we talked about being anxious for nothing and experiencing anxiety, right? We talked about this idea of chronic fear manifesting through panic attacks, for example, right? And we talked about the emotion known as fear, fight or flight. Now, here's the interesting thing about that. If I'm in a fire, I assure you, your heart's racing. I assure you, 
you're lightheaded, but we call that tunnel vision. I assure you, your stomach might be distressed, but see, you're paying attention to the fire. You're not paying attention to your emotional symptoms. If I'm having a panic attack, on the other hand, I'm having what we call a false alarm. In other words, the fear response is what we call a true alarm. A panic attack is what we call a false alarm. It's the fear response happening out of context. So let's break that down a little bit. Here's some examples in the word of the emotion known as fear. So let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 43. Acts chapter 2, verse 43. Let's break that down. Subheading says a vital church grows. All right, here's what it says, right? It talks about, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. And it says, then fear came upon every soul. Notice that fear came upon every soul, right? And many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now, all who believed were together and had all things in common. So when we reference the Greek word phobos and fear, oftentimes it's cross-referenced in, um, in the Greek to these scriptures that we're reading right now. If we stay in Acts and go to uh, 19, Acts 19, and we'll go to verse 17, again on this topic of fear, it says, we'll start in 16, it says, then the man in whom the evil spirit was, uh, in, in whom the evil spirit was, leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them. So that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. That is embarrassing. And then it says in verse 17, this became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. Watch this. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Right. So we're talking about fear again in that context. So let's go over to first Corinthians. Go to first Corinthians. We're going to go to chapter or verse or chapter two. 1 Corinthians 2, we're going to go to verse 3, right? And this is Paul talking. And it's talking about Christ being Christ crucified. So it says, verse 2 says, For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling, right? In weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And let's go over to Luke. Just kind of sprinkle this some more. So Luke chapter 21. We're going to go in verse 11. Right. We'll start in verse 10. It says, then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Verse 11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences. And there will be fearful sights and great signs from wonder. And again, intimidation from adversaries in the Greek. And these cross references with the scripture talk about this idea of experiencing fear. We have reverential fear of God, of course. Amen. But we also have this idea of fear being elicited due to the things we're seeing. Right. So it's important to understand that distinction, because, again, experiencing fear when I'm in danger, experiencing anxiety when I have something coming up, those in and of themselves aren't the issue. But the word the word of God tells us, though is that a spirit of fear is chronic fearfulness manifested through both chronic anxiety, but also through chronic fear. Now, when I say again, chronic fear is what we call in the natural panic. Fear, the fear response, again, fight or flight or freeze is a true alarm. That's what we call the fear response. If I'm having the fear response chronically over and over when there's no threat, that's what we call panic, which is a false alarm. What am I saying? I'm saying fear and panic are literally, literally the exact same process. But the thing is, is that panic is a false alarm, right? It's something we've been programmed to experience because, because of a spirit of fear and chronic fearfulness. Whereas fear, regularly speaking, the fear response, I'm in danger, somebody's attacking, things like that. I'm equipped to address it. Hey, man, see, and there's a difference there because it mobilizes us to take effective action when we're at, in fact in danger. All right. All right. Amen. So let's keep going. So what I'm getting at here is that a spirit of fear leads to the fear response chronically, again, known as the panic attack. And that's something that's very important is that the thing is, is when I have these panic symptoms, if I'm experiencing fear. So if I'm manifesting panic symptoms and I'm having these all the time and they're happening chronically. The problem with that 
is that my brain and my body, again, my soul and my body are lining up with each other and they're not really taking credence to what the word of God says. It's that I've been programmed to associate subtle bodily sensations, bodily sensations that aren't in fact threatening. But see, my brain might remind me that I had a negative experience or a traumatic experience, right? And therefore, anytime I get a hint or a twinge in my body, my brain associates those symptoms with the potential of panic, right? So therefore, what happens is my mind starts playing tricks on me and it says, oh, remember that time you had that panic attack at Target, right? So all of a sudden, I subtly interpret those sensations as, oh no, I'm in danger, oh no, then that revs up the engine more, my symptoms start to intensify, my thoughts start to spiral, and boom, I'm having a full-blown panic attack. That's how panic works. Now, if I have those panic symptoms in the context of a situation, then my brain and the enemy wants to work and say, you know what, remember you had that panic attack on the interstate? Remember you had that panic attack in Target? Remember you had that panic? See, it's always that are you who you say you are. You see what I'm saying? And that's how the enemy tries to get us, even with these things we struggle with in the soul. It's this idea of, are you who you think you really are, right? So it's this idea of your brain saying, are you sure that you want to go to Target? Because you see, last time you went, you had that panic attack. So you know it might be dangerous. You don't want that to happen in front of people, do you? And then my brain communicates that and sends that adrenaline and those hormones throughout my body. My heart starts racing. I view that as a symptom of danger. I start thinking and my thoughts start spiraling again. And I'm like, here we go again. And my heart rate starts increasing. My stomach starts feeling distressed. I start feeling lightheaded like I'm going to pass out, which by the way, you can't pass out from a panic attack. See how the devil's a liar? But why am I lightheaded? Because my blood and oxygen are flowing to the most important part of my body, the large muscles that are needed for fight or flight. See, this is what I'm saying. This is for somebody. We got to confront. We're going to talk about how to confront these things next time. But I think it's so incredibly important to recognize that we essentially have learned to associate harmless symptoms sometimes, saints, with threat that doesn't in fact exist. So if I pair those symptoms and those panic attacks with places, then all of a sudden I'm developing what we call agoraphobia. I'm staying away from places where these symptoms might happen. Crowds, being home alone, right? Being on the interstate, all these things that are not meant to harm us. And it's all because a spirit of fear, we've mani it's been manifested through us having a negative emotional experience and our brains trying to get us to latch on to that instead of what the word tells us. See, so the thing is, is that the word of God has all the answers for us to unlock these things. I'm just helping us massage the understanding piece so that we can navigate and eliminate these symptoms. Amen. So again, you know, some people have asked me, so I just wanted to address that, you know, what's agoraphobia? Is that being housebound? Not necessarily. Agoraphobia is simply having anxiety about being in places or situations where escape might be difficult or embarrassing if I were to have a panic attack specifically, right? That's that chronic fearfulness. So in other words, if I have panic attacks on a regular basis and those panic attacks get paired with places, that's what causes agoraphobia to manifest, right? So again, the emotion of fear, right? It's found in the word, the emotion of anxiety, you know, being anxious about something coming up, experiencing anxiety versus being anxious are not the same thing, right? If we have chronic anxiety and chronic fear, that's when it disrupts our lives and shifts our attention away from what the word of God tells us so that we can manifest all that power and glorify God and through the things that we can do, right? While we're uh, navigating things, amen? So that's the issue with that. So what I'm saying here is that two, two pieces to the essence of a spirit of fear. One is what we call chronic anxiety. And the second one is what we call chronic panic. So I say all that to say that anxiety primes the pump for these, these panic attacks. If we have the spirit of fear manifesting in our lives. And what we're going to talk about as we move forward is how to navigate situations so that we're not crippled, right? that our soul is not communicating danger to our body because again, anxiety and fear and anger and shame and any emotion we have has three parts, not one. We got thoughts, we got physical sensations in our body and we got behavior. So here's what I'm saying. In summary, what I'm saying is a spirit of fear is expressed through being anxious and experiencing the fear response in the absence of danger. Let me say that again. A spirit of fear often is expressed 
through being anxious and experiencing the fear response, also known as panic, when there is no danger. Well, Dr. Kevin, it feels real. Well, that's because in our soul and our body, it is in fact real. Again, there's facts and then there's truth. It's not denying that it's not real. It's saying that God didn't give me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So me learning these truths that we're talking about, learning that confronting these symptoms, which we'll talk about next time, the thought life, learning how we can navigate these things, even if I'm uncomfortable, that distress has to go away because my body's designed for it to do so. And I'm more than a conqueror and I can do it despite what my body will. Kevin, I feel like I'm going to pass out. I promise you, you can't from panic. Amen. You can't. That's a lie from the enemy. And I'm telling you right now that if we put our armor on, which is offensive armor, and we move forward and we unlock these truths in the word of God, we're going to be absolutely masterpieces in the eyes of God and building the kingdom and glorifying him in everything we touch because you're equipped. So somebody who's watching who has been struggling with panic, right? That's not of God. I have a saying, panic is not organic. I repeat, panic is not organic. That is not who you are, right? That trauma that you experience, that is not who you are, right? That social anxiety that you have, that is not who you are. Those are symptoms, right? Those are things that have been passed along through the, what we call the family transmission of anxiety. Things have been modeled for us, right? We've associated things that are not dangerous with emotional experiences. But I promise you, saints, we can reprogram these things. Amen. So I'm just hoping and praying for all of you. For one, I'll be praying for everybody who's watching. But I also want to say, though, that throughout this, you know, I hope that you're unlocking some truths here that can apply to your day to day life from a practical standpoint. Because the next time we get together, so week three, next Friday, we're going to talk about uh, the thoughts. We're going to talk about what I call the old man and the new man. So, how to reprogram the things we've learned to think through the spirit of fear and reprogram that so that we can fight back using the word of God and counter those thoughts and put the enemy in his place. I'm excited. I can't wait because I like action. <laughs> Amen. So I cannot wait for that part. But I'm telling y'all, it is so essential that we understand these truths first so that we can unlock these things that have been such a mystery to us and understand what anxiety is, understand what a spirit of fear is, understand where it came from so that we can take the word of God and the truths contained therein and extrapolate it and apply it to our situations on a day-to-day -day life so that we're functioning fully, spirit, soul, and body. Amen? So if you need to reach out again, uh, my email, kevin at kycards, K-Y-C-A-R-D-S dot com. Like many of y'all have gotten in touch with me and I've responded. So again, if you have questions, uh, if you have comments, um, anything you, any resources you need, you need an article, anything like that, you know, we are brothers and sisters in the Lord and I want to equip. So send me an email if you want. Again, Kevin at kycards.com. Um, and then just, just give me a holler there. All right. Love y'all. And again, we're going to talk about how to reprogram th thoughts in the next time that we're uh, on together. All right. Love y'all. Amen.